It was shoot a takedown. Uh -huh. I sprawl, uh -huh. and he actually pulls half guard. Yeah, he pulls half guard or close guard. Yeah, he does. He pulls half guard, That's and right. usually people don't want to be here. Okay, guys, today we're going to do another breakdown. A very, very good fight last night, which was a fight between yes, Kevin Holland and... Marvin Vittori. Yeah, great fight. Fighter Kevin Holland looked different. He was able to initiate and really impose his striking. However, Vittori's wrestling really came into play. So we're going to look at some uh, techniques that Vittori was able to do, and Holland, for whatever reason, wasn't be able to react um, today. So mm -hmm. let's kind of cover those positions first. And then we can open up like a Q&A and okay. just look at other positions too. Okay. Right? The first thing I want to talk about is the wrestling. Vittori was able to take him down, I think, 11 times. And it was all because of the clinch game. Um, for any wrestler, this will probably be you know pretty easy, common sense uh, conversation for you all. But those of you that don't understand the wrestling game, everything happens underneath the arms. In wrestling, they say the lower man wins because they're working the clinch game and they're trying to work their inside pummel, what they call their inside pummel. And anytime they connect their hands over the hip, they're going to take the person down. So Holland wasn't able to disrupt that. He wasn't able to pummel any of the hands through. So as we come up, um, Vittori was able to connect the hip body lock, work his leg trips, work different positions, run him against the cage here, and really work him against the cage and really take him down almost at will. Holland did nothing to pummel. So if my opponent has the double unders, my hips need to get back. If I'm over at the, the cage, then I'm gonna re-pummel and start working and redirecting my opponent back to the cage. If I can't do that, no problem. This hand is also gonna re-pummel this way. Now I have some sort of barrier. I have some sort of leverage to keep him away from that hip body lock. Now I can start turning him in. Now I can start dropping my shoulder, maybe grab the glove, maybe work a single, maybe in Holland's case, come back and get into a fight position. But there was no disruption of that pummel. There was no pummeling on Holland's part. There was no down blocking. There was nothing going on. He would literally accept the hip body lock. And once a wrestler connects their hands behind your waist, it's over. You heard this in the DC commentary. He kept talking about this. DC, of course, is you know Olympic caliber wrestling. Wrestled very high level in college. Once you connect the hands like that, you're pretty much able to do what you want. And you could feel that, right? Yeah. As you connect your hands, like yeah. pretty much do what you want with this. me. I can't really do anything outside yeah. of this because your arms are underneath my arms. And so pummeling is one of the steps, turning inside, using my shoulder, re-pummeling this way, really trying to break that grip and keep my hips away so I'm able to fight some more throughout the match. Now, that, that also um, translates when you're trying to defend a double, right? Because some Marvin would like shoot in mm -hmm. and then from here, come up. Exactly. So do you start trying to pummel here? So, good question, right? So if we come back against the cage or not against the cage? Against the cage, because he, he would shoot and then drive him into the cage. Yeah, so go back to that position. As soon as I do that, this is called a down block. I'm able to cross face and down block you this way. So now you gotta get past that arm. You can't really drive through if my arm is in the way. Kevin Holland didn't do any of that. Yeah. So down blocking, so down blocking would be in this position. My hand is ready to down block here. Okay. My head is at center, and then I'm using this hand to keep you away. You see this in wrestling a lot. Because it's MMA, they're standing up posture. Mm -hmm. yep. So when he goes for there, he should down block with his arm, okay. push the shoulder through, maybe cross face is one thing. Um, another thing that you can do is something that a lot of MMA fighters don't do, and it's basically reverse the body lock with their own body lock. Oh, okay. There's a really cool position we talked about recently. Um, so if you get a double, and I'm not able to pummel, I can re-pummel you back this way. Now, I'm gonna time it, because as I move, let's move this way a little bit. So I'm gonna just do a, an easy throw. As I move, I can re-pummel you, stay heavy, and as you shoot the double, we come back and now we're in this position. This is a great technique by one of the famous greats, Kyle Bake. He just um, won the Open Olympic Trials mm. and he uses this position a lot. So if I'm not able to pummel, I can re-grip a body okay. lock myself. Okay. The more you drive into me, the more you're gonna fly. Okay. You felt that. Yes. Right? And then we re and then we scramble up back to a turtle position. Okay. Um, some other things you can do if you run me back into the cage, my hands have to drop. So now you can't lock your arms, and so now I can re-pummel this way. Now I can switch over and then come back to my fight stance. Okay. So unless those are you're, unless you're Habib, because sometimes he will shoot and they'll do that, 
And then he still figures out a way yeah, to come back this way. Of yeah. course, that's years of Sambo training. And Sambo training is like jujitsu on steroids. It's more aggressive than jujitsu. It's a cousin of jujitsu. It actually started with origins from Japan. So they're focused on less rules. So they do leg locks, they do striking, combat Sambo, and they're able to redirect their position. So Habib was able to do that really well in his career because his background, pedigree background in Sambo. So. so something else that Holland was doing that kept getting him taken down was when he shoots the sim, the, the double comes here, Holland would drop, like he would try to drop his base. Uh -huh. And then as he drops, 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 then. Exactly, so yeah, dropping the base wouldn't work well. Dropping base works well if you're doing some sort of like headlock escape. So okay. if you have a headlock here, okay. then dropping my base works because then I can start yeah, I can start sweeping. Okay. But in this position, a hip body lock, you don't want to drop your base. You're actually okay. giving away. Okay. I want to keep my hips back. So as he gets the hip body lock, my hips start going back this way. Okay. And now as my hips are back, it's very hard. See, you're going to take me down when my hips are glued to your hips. Now you can push me where I want. Exactly, right. right? But if my hips are back, now I can start pummeling and really disrupting that connection here. Okay. So hips back. I want to get traffic in the way of your shot. Right, whether it's hip body lock or a double leg. Once you're low center and you have a double double leg here, that's when I have to start working that pummel. Start okay. cross facing. Okay. See, it's hard to go into a shot when you're this way. Right. Of course, if all else fails, that's when I said to, to reverse with another body lock this way and use it as a throw. Okay. So there's some things he could have done. I would say he, he needs to really like study some wrestling and just focus on that. His striking is already great. There's nothing wrong with his striking. His jujitsu is good too. I think you know, spending more time wrestling, his jiu-jitsu will only get better because then he'll be able to control his opponent, stay composed, reverse, escape, and then go back to his world, which is the striking world. So, um, did you have any questions about the fight too? Yeah, um, let's, let's actually talk about half guard because the one thing I've noticed as I watch MMA, especially watching guys like Habib, um, GSP, DC, Kane, all these really dominant wrestlers is they actually favor half guard. Right in jujitsu, a lot of times you want to go from full guard, half guard, and then side control, and then um, full mount. Mm -hmm. But in MMA, a lot of times they actually don't go to mount; they just stay in half guard. So, if you yes. Mm -hmm. Now, someone like someone like John Jones, who has really good striking. A lot of people will disagree, but <laughs> I think he has a good striking. Oh, I think he has good striking. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't really he doesn't really care too much about chest to chest. Yeah. Because if you get back up to your feet, that's okay. You guys can keep mm -hmm. striking. So John will actually stay kind of like this and look for elbows. Mm -hmm. But when you, someone like Jan Wachowicz against Israel that's right. and then Marvin Vittori, they come here, but then the pressure's on. Top yeah. pressure yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. And from here, you know, they don't posture up and try to strike because they know the opponent can, can, can wiggle out. They, they, they keep top pressure right here and do, you know, body, body, head, body, body. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of people think it's so boring because there's nothing going on. That's right. So my question is, when you have a big, strong guy so a holding lot, you uh -huh. here, what do you do? A lot of things are going on. Number one, head control. Because you control my head, I can't move my body very right. well. You also have an underhook. So I can't pummel and work a single leg. I can't really work anything deep with this. So mm -hmm. these two positions are very, very good. Very good for MMA, very, very good for self-defense. You can control an opponent in jiu-jitsu competitions. That's one of my favorite controls. The cross face and the underhook. So I'm, I'm, I'm in a very bad position here. The other thing is MMA fighters stay in half guard because they're controlling their hips, right? If you were to be in side control, there's a chance I can explode into a scramble and escape. But I can't do that here because one, you're controlling the cross face, and two, you have a security right there of a lever that's preventing me from escaping. So half guard is great because you control the opponent, you score the points, you grind them out, you get them tired. This is a very exhausting position for me because I'm just constantly, gravity's on your side, so I'm just getting tired here. So I have to understand those components before I even understand what I need to do to get out. So what do I need to do? I need to get rid of this underhook. I need to get rid of this cross face. I need to realize that half guard is not good for me. And so those three positions I'm gonna attack. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use what I call uh, a, a concept we call in Jiu Jitsu is um, uh, concaving of the shoulders, rounding of the back, never staying flat. Once I'm flat, I'm done. Once I stop, I'm done. And so I gotta create momentum here. What I'm gonna do is use this hand, 
just as a frame. This is like the first option I teach to a lot of students who are first learning jujitsu and they really need to work on their movement. I teach this concept a lot because I want to think of it as a concept rather than a technique. So I'm gonna use my hand and just really club you with the side of the neck and bridge my foot, guys, is not far. If my foot is far, there is no leverage here. If my foot is close to my hips, look how high my hips can go. So I'm gonna combine by keeping my, my feet close to my hips, realizing that I'm still hooking behind his hamstring so he doesn't get his leg out, and I'm gonna club him all the way up as hard as I can to create movement and momentum. When I do this, he's gonna go back into me. When he goes back into me, I go the other way. Of course, I'm not gonna reverse him because he's a strong guy, very technical. When he comes back, I start working my escape. So look, my leg swings to the inside. My right leg comes all the way out, right? Do you see my right leg? It's all the way to his growing. And then now I start shrimping and hip escaping all the way to the side to close my guard, break his posture, and now we're in close guard. So all those things have to happen in order for me to disrupt your movement. And I can't do it flat. I gotta rock up and down, side to side, move to create the movement. That's the first option. I think that's more practical and it's more realistic. The second option I would only teach if the guy has trained jujitsu and, and has, has several years training jujitsu. It's a little bit more advanced, but we've seen it in the past fights with um, Nugera. We've seen it in the past fights with Shogun Hua this type of movement where they use the half guard to go into what we call deep half guard to escape, not to stay there. There's deep half guard for jiu-jitsu, for matches, that's to stay there. This is deep half guard to escape. And it goes like this. I have my half guard, I'm gonna use a deep half guard here. And when he has that pressure forward, I'm still gonna do the same thing. This right hand is gonna go hide in, in the middle of his legs. If I grab the far side leg, he could actually pin my arm and it's worse now. I'm kind of stuck here, right? He can actually also do the same thing, but I want you to kind of sit on my wrist. So kind of get back a little bit and say, yeah, now it's really pinned. And now you can like, you can actually strike me with the shoulder. We've, yeah, seen, we've seen McGregor do this. <laughs> yeah. So this is very bad. Hammer fist, I'm stuck here. If he sprawls, he really destroys my movement. Now I'm even stuck more. Okay, so what I want to do, come back to the position. I don't want to know I'm doing that. I'm sneaking my hand in between his legs and I'm not grabbing this leg. I'm going to grab this leg. And this hand is gonna do the same thing. Foot close to the hip, hand ready to club, create momentum. When he comes back, I can either do two of one things. I can just go for the position, or I can frame at his face to just create more movement. My knees go to my chest, I come up here to his leg, out the back door, and then I start working my back take. I can go for the back here, start working my positions this way. I can, if I feel more comfortable on my feet, I can scramble back up and work my stand up. But this one, is a, it's a bit of a risk, but if you've been training jiu-jitsu, you'll feel more comfortable with this movement. So these are two options that I like you know, for this type of training. Maybe this is something Israel could have done in his fight. Uh, maybe this is something that um, Holland could have worked on, is creating the half guard to get to another position, never staying flat, rocking back and forth. When you rock back and forth, your opponent has to really, really focus on controlling the grip. It's sweaty, there's movement. It's actually easier to escape these positions. We practice these positions with geese, and geese, doesn't matter how sweaty you are, you stay stuck, so. And what I really like about that last one, if you go back, is I like the idea of being sneaky with it. Because just knowing me, if I'm rolling, the moment I, f I feel you hook here, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. I'm dealing with this right away, mm -hmm. but you here and not cupping the back of my legs, I barely know it's there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not even worried about it. Yep. Because when Shogun was fighting John Jones, and I've watched that fight a million times, Shogun kept trying to grab dig. this. And every time he would touch John here, even if John was close, he would feel that, and right away, he'd stay back. Yes, and Shogun would immediately go cup again. And, mm -hmm. But I, I'm, now that you show that, I'm wondering if maybe he could have got this if he didn't cup. Just snuck it in, held it right there. Maybe snuck it in, maybe pretend, we're well not pretend, but rather set up this illusion to John Jones that he's he's gonna come up for a single leg mm -hmm. and John Jones would give the wrestler a, a, a counter. So if I come up for a single leg, mm -hmm. you throw in a wizard, right? Yeah, so you think I'm gonna try to out wrestle you, now I can dive back deep to the same position to come back here there we and go. then come back out. There we go. So jujitsu, like fighting, is very psychological. Bait your opponent to think you're going one way, go the other way. Well, you know, Shogun is a legend, so is John Jones. So you have two icons of the sport. They're fighting, their styles might counter each other's style. 
this is a point where you know Shogun had to be more tactical in it. And I remember that fight. That was kind of the changing of the guard, yeah. right? When the yeah. old school kind of gave it to the new school. So there's some things he could have done. Another thing he could have done, if he was comfortable in his jujitsu, is if John Jones is back, right? Really work this open guard slash butterfly guard, where now he can pull him in to like leg locks. Here and you see this a lot with Damon Damian Maya, Maya. Um, Ryan Hall. Yeah. Um, Paul Harris, yeah. even though he doesn't let go when they tap. Nope. <laughs> terrible. So, terrible at that. But the other guys are really good at putting them in this Ashigurami one leg X position where they can isolate the leg and really attack the leg locks. And there's a lot to be said about the leg locks. Um, it's another aspect of the game that people aren't exploring, especially at MMA. Maybe that could have done it. Maybe it could have given Shogun some time and space to come back up. So Yeah, Damien never gets stuck in half guard because of that last one you just showed. Mm -hmm. He comes up. That's right. He comes. David Maia does a great job of executing his jujitsu to work for MMA, right? I think um, at one point in his career, he tried focusing on striking. It got in trouble. It didn't work. He came back to his jujitsu, which is very, very good, and he uses a lot of the same components. He never stops moving. He's always back and forth. He's working on underhook. Um, we've had this conversation before. He's 43 years old. Mm -hmm. He's in the top 10 still. He can probably pick. He could probably still beat 80% of the guys in the top 10. Yeah. He probably can't with beat just jujitsu. With just jujitsu, he probably can't beat you know the the, the, the top two, maybe the top three, mm -hmm. uh, because they're so good. Yeah. But also because he's 43 years yeah. old. But it allowed jujitsu has allowed him to stay in the game for so long without taking serious brain damage, without taking any hard damage. And he does this concept where he goes back and forth, gets his legs, stays very tight. And he either gets your back, he sweeps you, mm -hmm. he goes for a leg lock, what happens? They retreat, mm -hmm. he uses that as a sweep to come back up. And if the guys knew more jujitsu, they would see that, of course, it'd be hard to counter that with Damon Maya, but they can actually probably counter the leg lock by coming forward. But it, it takes a long time to develop that skill. It takes a, a very long time. So I could understand why they retreat because you panic when someone touches your legs. And D Damien is so comfortable at this. Sometimes he will shoot. He will shoot a takedown. Uh -huh. I sprawl, uh -huh. and he actually pulls half guard. Yeah, he pulls half guard or close guard. Yeah, yeah he does. He pulls half guard, That's and right. usually people don't want to be here because no. you get stuck. But nope, he pulls. He pulls. And the it. next thing you know, he's yeah. either, he's either gonna do, I, he does this a lot. He's yeah. either gonna play his half guard to the back. Yeah. Or he'll start bringing this in, and he starts coming in here. Yep. He starts going to this one leg right. X, and right. from here he can heel hook you, ankle lock you. He can do other leg locks. But what happens? His opponents retreat, and he uses that to come up yeah. to sweep. His top pressure is amazing because yeah. he's able to pass the guard mm -hmm. in very similar ways. It's brilliant, man. Yep, get the back. Brilliant. And so imagine if most MMA fighters trained that level of Jiu Jitsu. They would be so, so good. The matches would go so much longer yeah. because now it's a tactical game and they're trying to move at different angles and like use their positions to control. And you have amazing athletes in MMA. So, you know, if they can just learn a little bit more Jiu Jitsu, they can yeah. really expand their game a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. All right. Thank cool. you. Awesome. Thank Good you. questions. Guys, if you have any questions, please um, drop them in the comment box and we'll try to do our best to answer. Um, again, Marshall, it's great for having you. You know, do My these breakdowns with us. Until next time, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you soon. Oos.